So if you've been around for as long as I have, you've probably used many different devices as your primary OS installation target. Back in the day I had IDE or SCSI hard drives, then I moved to SATA drives, either hard drives or solid state ones, and then more recently everything OS related pretty much moved to M2 NVMe drives of some sort. But I have certainly installed Windows on other devices, especially external ones. I had a Windows 10 installation of some sort on an external HDD, and I've used that with my old MacBook. It had bootcamp installation. It wasn't pretty. But I've also used other bootable devices to install my OS, like DVDs and USBs, but I recently got curious about which one of those can actually be used to run the OS from, not just as means to boot from it and install it on an internal drive. So in this video I've set out to find out the answer to that question and as our test subject I've chosen this perfectly unassuming Lenovo, well, notebook <laughs> of some sort. It's a G710, a 17 inch Pentium M laptop from 2014 and yeah it just looks like your usual suspect college slash business portable, nothing really of note, just a meh CPU, a meh GPU paired with a meh amount of RAM. I guess one cool thing about it is that screen and yeah it's a nice large 17 inch panel and also being a Lenovo it has a pretty nice set of I.O. We have a full sized VGA out along with HDMI, USB 3 and a couple of USB 2 ports, a full sized SD card reader, an Ethernet jack and a headphone jack. Pretty nice if you ask me. And apart from having some more modern features like HDMI or USB 3, it also has some great legacy features like that VGA out and of course that optical media drive, which at that point in time many portables started excluding. And being produced in 2014 it initially came with Windows 8 pre-installed, which, you know, Windows 8. But by the time I got it, lord knows from where, probably an auction for a couple of bucks, it came with a password free Windows 10 install, of course, and it was sluggish as balls. Seriously, it took forever to boot, and once it did, I mean it had a whole bunch of bloatware installed on a slow 500 gig hard drive. Part of the reason for that lack of performance was for sure the spinning rust drive the OS was installed onto, but I think the other factor was the OS itself. And while the hardware is up to snuff when it comes to running Windows 10, but I don't know, it just kind of felt that it'd be more appropriate to run something leaner and older, and I've settled on Windows 7. And before you start screaming Linux, yes we are coming to that, though out of necessity as you'll see, so settle down. However, one thing I've decided to do differently for this occasion is to go for a slightly different taste of Windows 7, and this is something I was always interested in but just never really experimented with, which is a light or tiny version of Windows. And this in particular is called Windows Tiny 7, for which I've downloaded and burned the ISO off and proceeded to boot from it. It's essentially a smaller, leaner version of the original ISO, but with many of unnecessary bloat and programs removed, and in theory it should provide an overall better experience for older, less capable machines. And even though I really don't think this particular notebook falls into that category, I still wanted to reduce the installation space as much as possible because, well, you'll see. <laughs> And just looking at the installation process, one would be hard pressed to find anything really different from the original, although I do think the overall process took way less. I think I got to the desktop in like less than 15 minutes, which was already great. After getting to the desktop I could see that everything was working very well, although I did have to take care of a couple of drivers and after that, yeah I had a bottom of the range 12 year old Lenovo piece of crap laptop with a bare bones Windows 7 installation. But having just used this thing for a couple of minutes I could immediately tell that it was much speedier even with that HDD in place and it went from taking literal minutes to boot to restarting and getting to the desktop in under one minute. Nice. But from here is where it really gets interesting because I was planning on cloning that drive to, well, different storage devices. And this is a good time to thank the good folks from EaseUS for helping me out with this video, since I've used their disk copy software to do pretty much all the experiments in this video, and as you'll see it's super simple to use and also very effective. And even though I've used it to do a bunch of random experiments, it's highly useful if you're moving your installation to a bigger or just a different drive and you don't feel like reinstalling everything manually. It's also useful for just backing up your files exactly to another drive since it makes a direct clone of your drive. 
So if you'd like to check them out, use the link in my description and also keep watching to see how you can use it to clone your drives. For the first experiment, we'll just use a simple adapter like this to connect up a spare Kingston SATA SSD I have from goodness knows where. And you can see that it still has this bracket from where it was mounted previously. So I'll just connect it to the USB 3 port of this notebook and after making sure the computer recognized it fine, I proceeded to use our little disk copying utility to clone the entire OS from our target hard drive to the new SSD. And after just a couple of clicks it started doing its thing and after about 10 minutes I was left with an exact copy of the hard drive on this new, hopefully speedier, SSD. And well it was time to test that out. After shutting the machine off I turned it over and proceeded to remove two screws from the bottom which allowed me to unsnap and remove the bottom cover and well yeah <laughs> that's pretty bad and unfortunately extremely common with these old machines I get in absolutely filthy and dusty so while I'm in here I'll take the opportunity to just dust it out a bit not the greatest idea to do indoors but there you go and after I was done letting this thing breathe for the first time in a long time I removed the old hard drive and inserted our SSD with the clone partition on it after that it was time to see if it would boot to Windows and I've turned the machine over pressed the power button and of course it wouldn't just boot because that would be too easy it would continuously try to go into a LAN boot sequence, so I figured there must be something screwed up with the boot options. So I went into the BIOS to check, and I made sure to change the boot order and priorities, after which it would try to boot from it, but it just come up with a BSOD and an O7B error. Great. After that I went to my old hard drive and tried cloning it a couple of more times including a different SSD uh, but no luck and at this point I got concerned because perhaps there was a driver issue or something I did with the installation that was conflicting with the new SSD. So I just reinstalled the OS but left out any of the drivers and just tried cloning the bare installation and by golly that worked first try. The machine fired right up and boy howdy was it ever fast. And I've again timed it, and yeah, it was ridiculously fast, taking just mere seconds to reboot. So, alright, we've managed to do an installation on the internal hard drive and then clone it to another SSD, which is cool, but not too exciting. So let's then move on to external solutions then, shall we? And I wanted to try using this ancient external hard drive I had for probably 15 years, and it's likely 20 years old itself. And yeah, this is the one I had that Windows 10 installation for my Mac years back. But at this point I wanted to try cloning my Windows 7 installation to it and booting from it. I was successful in copying all the necessary files onto it and after a while the cloning process was finished and I proceeded to take out this thing's primary SSD and try booting straight from the external hard drive. And well, again it didn't really work since it would just fail to boot immediately upon turning on and it would just restart continuously. I of course tried changing the boot options to both legacy and UEFI and this computer was indeed new enough to support both and it was indeed capable of booting installers from USBs as you'll see but it wouldn't boot from this external hard drive. Well you know I thought perhaps there are some issues with this direct cloning method so I wanted to try installing the OS directly to the external drive itself which I've tried doing just by going through the DVD installer but as you can imagine I've indeed encountered a whole slew of errors the major one being unable to install or configure Windows to USB or IEEE external devices. And I of course tried reformatting and changing the partition table from MBR to GPT and vice versa, but nothing would allow me to install it onto the external drive. I have read however that older versions of Windows, in particular Windows 7, do have issues with installing to external devices, so I wanted to try Windows 10 instead. I have tried installing it through both the 32-bit DVD version and 64-bit UEFI USB and both failed to give me a result, even again after reformatting the drive, partitioning it, changing the partition tables and so on. Nothing. And before you say the drive is too old, which I mean it's not, <laughs> I tried a regular SATA drive through an external adapter but no luck. 
And like I said, I knew it was possible because I did in fact had Windows already installed on here, but it was through a special utility. And at this point I was feeling pretty pissed off with this whole Windows crap. I mean, why does it have to be so goddamn hard? And it's not like even USB 2 interface wouldn't be fast enough for running this older OS. And there is no good reason to force you to go to any third party utilities to do something that should really be straightforward and easy to do. And to prove how easy this could be, for the remainder of this experiment I've decided to say screw you Windows and to embrace the open nature and serviceability of our good friend Linux. I have Linux Mint here, but other flavors and distros ought to work just fine as well. And not only can Linux be easily booted into from DVD, and indeed cloned to one as we'll see, but it doesn't even care where you install it, as long as you have enough room, you're all set. And it didn't even complain about the external nature of the hard drive I was installing it onto, it just went on and installed it. And yeah, if you're looking for a portable OS you can take with you on a portable drive, I really think Linux is the king in this regard. And after the installation, which really didn't take that long, even through that USB 2 interface, I mean, if nobody told me I was running this OS from a 15 year old beat up hard drive through this slow USB 2 interface, I probably wouldn't even notice. However, I still wanted to see if this installation could be just cloned using that Ease US utility, so I went back to our Windows 7 installation and tried cloning the existing Linux installation to some other portable media, like say a USB stick. And sure enough, after it was done copying all the files to the stick, I rebooted the machine without any of the other devices connected and the damn thing booted straight up. No fuss, no errors, like I said, it just doesn't care. And much like that external hard drive, I mean it felt pretty dang smooth. Although granted I wouldn't trust this as my primary OS holding device, just because, you know, USB sticks. I've also used the utility to clone the contents to an SD card, and the software itself can clone it to pretty much any storage device, and if you'd like, it'll even do it sector by sector. You think Linux mines? Not at all, boots right the heck up, and as long as your computer supports booting off of an SD card, which this one thankfully does, yeah, Linux really doesn't care if you should or shouldn't do it, it just lets you. And sure, the performance may not be great, although depending on what you plan on doing, it might work just fine, and also there's the question of SD or flash storage integrity. I already made a video about running your old computers from an SD card using an SD to ID converter and people went crazy over the fact that you shouldn't do that since the SD card isn't designed to have the OS installed on it. And yes it's true, but sometimes like in the case of that old notebook, they use an old hard drive interface and the drives themselves can be pretty expensive and hard to come by nowadays. So something like this is a great hobby solution, even if not the most reliable. Also, perhaps you have a computer with a defected or corrupted hard drive interface and you have to work around that. Or maybe you just want to have a neat portable solution on an external hard drive, SSD, USB, SD card or DVD. <laughs> Yeah, Linux installations come with its own little pre-installation environment you can actually do other stuff in, and even though there are Windows equivalents to that, known as Windows PE, I mean we've already established that for portable purposes, Linux really kicks ass. As far as how to install it, well you can just install it directly to a drive of your choice, internal or external, or you can indeed use tools like EaseUS Disk Copy to easily clone that installation to a whole bunch of other media instead of going through the installation process a bunch of times. So in conclusion, we've managed to not only install, but run the actual OS from 7 different types of storage media. First we installed the OS on the internal HDD and then copied that to internal SSD. Then we moved on to installing it on an external hard drive and you can also install it on an external SSD. Afterwards we cloned the entire installation to a USB stick and an SD card and if you'd like you could also run Linux from a DVD. And I don't know if there are any other formats we could possibly install the OS to, but if you do know any of them, please let me know in the comments, I might try it out sometimes. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today's experiment, and it was a fun one, good learning experience too, to see what works and what doesn't, and if you'd like to watch me do some more geeky experiments, do check out some of my other videos. I do them every week, and I also do reviews, restorations, retrospectives, and all sorts of nerdy tech stuff, so you might want to consider subscribing.
If you'd like to support what I do and get early access to my videos, you can join my Patreon page. And I usually have a couple of videos posted there for my Patreons to enjoy first. If you'd like to chat with me and other users, you can join our Discord server. All the links will be in the video description. Thanks and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.